guys. Welcome to another video. I'm Em, a fellow vestibular warrior. Um, I'm the founder of Bliss Out, which is my site to support other vestibular warriors with all things holistic health and good vibes and healing energy. Um, and so if you know my story, it's now five years later for me from when my vestibular something hit, which if I'm going to slap labels on it, it would be vestibular neuritis. Uh, and vestibular migraines would be like the two big labels, not to say there weren't other labels thrown at me, um, as you may know if you've read my books. And my mission now is one, to continue fueling my health and you know, creating vibrancy, because it's not just about like getting through the vestibular something, it's about feeling really good. Um, and my goal that goes along with that is helping other people come through their vestibular something and feel empowered and offer love, light, and hope because this stuff is so crazy dark. Uh, going through a vestibular something, as I know you know if you're watching this and we're connecting. So this video is like where to start. And of course, my journey is not going to be identical to yours. The root cause of my vestibular something, you know, the components coming at it, whether it's environmentally, you know, physically in the body, structurally, like we, we are all individuals. So I can't say, you know, just because we might have the same labels of vestibular neuritis and vestibular migraines, or maybe it's triple PD, that doesn't mean what we're dealing with in the body is the same. Um, but I put it out there because, you know, all I wanted at the beginning of my journey is like, where do I even begin? What do I even do to start supporting my health so I can like trudge through these symptoms that are just so heavy and like where to even start? So I'm gonna offer the advice that I would give myself of five years ago and you take the pieces of it that resonate with you. Okay, so I didn't, first of all, I didn't have a diagnosis for, was it 18 months? Um, yeah, it was, I, I self-diagnosed, I had, you know, pieces come at me from doctors where I was putting the pieces together and, you know, had somehow stumbled across the word vestibular and that opened up the door for me to learn about more stuff. But to get, a, get an actual vestibular migraine diagnosis was over 18 months in. Um, it might've been exactly 21 months if I were to do like the math. Um, so, and I was like, so much healing had taken place by that time. Like I had was having 90% uh, days and weeks at that point. Um, and then just dealing with the heart and soul of the vestibular migraine episode. So, so much healing happened before I had a diagnosis, before I had a doctor who even understood anything that was going on in my body. Uh, so just keep that in mind as well. So what I needed was to just focus on fueling my health, to look at my lifestyle, to look at my diet, to look at my environment, like so much of chronic illness, it's not just one thing, okay? Like the skincare products that we use, the chemicals in our food, um, in our home, um, the people we surround ourselves with, the energy, the food that we're putting in our body, which is our fuel. And I always say that diet has been the foundation of my healing, not that it alone, has been the thing that has healed me, but it has been like the rock and the thing that has carried me forward as I worked through these other components. So I would look at how you're eating. Um, I went back to school for holistic nutrition. I just wanted to really empower myself. I follow. I have followed a uh, vegan diet for the last decade, and now my focus is just like a plant-powered diet that's whole foods. Like it's kind of shifted. I don't care about like labels. Um, and I hate to even throw a label out there because I think that what is most important is real whole foods, organic whenever possible. So because the chemicals and the pesticides, you got to think like your nervous system is, is very sensitive and you could be dealing with gut stuff. You know, this stuff is all interconnected and your liver needs so much love. And if we're throwing chemicals and pesticides at it, it's a big problem. It's a huge contributing factor to chronic illness in our world today. So really look at the food you're eating, like stuff out of, yes, there are things that are not terrible that come from a package, um, but real foods, okay? Fruits, vegetables, um, if you do well with grains, like whole organic grains, maybe, you know, sometimes um, grains, people when they're dealing with inflammation aren't the greatest thing for them. You gotta, you gotta listen to your body. Um, for me, just like tons of fruits and vegetables and, you know, natural fats, 
proteins. Um, and if you're, if you eat animal products, like quality is everything. Okay. So organic, pasture raised, um, grass fed, these are things that can't be ignored because what is going into your body? Like you're trying to heal. You don't want to be putting any more junk into it. So it's a personal journey and I don't think there's any right or wrong when it comes to like the label of the diet, you really have to listen to your body um, and do what works for you. But real food, it, it, can't, it can't be ignored. Lifestyle, um, for me, I had to like really look at things that no longer were serving me or no longer mattered and how I was approaching each day. Like I had, I had to let the stressors like go to the side and you know, I was a mom of, you know, my two kids were very small at the time and I just, my focus just had to be them and getting through the work day and <laughs> focusing on my health and everything else was just noise. Okay. And then, you know, embracing things like meditation and yoga. And this took time. This is not like I was in the deep throes with symptoms and I was doing these things. This is all, it took time and really finding my calm in the storm. Um, so looking at how I was feeling my body, looking at my lifestyle, and this comes to like what you're bringing in your home. Okay. It goes beyond the food. It's your cleaning products. It's your self care products. Like all of that, like I'm huge into essential oils or my oils, um, as you, you may know, and that became a light in my life. Like how can I use oils as my healthcare system to support my body, both emotionally and physically, and then help my family. And I just, it was so fun to focus on using like plant medicine, okay? I got really into it because I needed a light. I didn't feel like, I didn't want just medication thrown at me. I wanted I wanted to do things that I could to support my health. And it just carries on to now, okay? I've learned so much and now I can do those things even through the vestibular something. So looking at that. And then, you know, the next step is, you know, if you can find a doctor and it doesn't have to be Western, maybe it's um, more alternative medicine. I worked with holistic practitioners, um, a functional neurologist at one point. I found uh, the holistic practitioners to, for me to be the most helpful because I really love looking at root cause stuff. I wasn't interested in throwing a band aid on my symptoms. Um, Although, you know, I know medication can be helpful in people during tough times to do that, but I really wanted to heal the root cause and that continues to be my focus when, in, you know, it's looking at health and I felt that, you know, doing things like nutrition response testing, which is something that you can look up and it's your energy field and like what your body needs. Um, that was something that I did a bunch uh, in the first few months and I, and it really, it's like peeling back layers, okay? So your vestibular something probably isn't just like one thing. Maybe, but if it's not, you know, there might be layers of things. Like an example for me would be like, I was dealing with hazardous toxins and heavy metals and a fungal thing um, at one point. And this is all various times like over, you know, the journey, but it's not like one thing that I could just address and then poof, it was all better because my stuff hit three months postpartum after the birth of my second child, and it was like my liver could no longer, you know, handle everything that was going on. It wasn't one thing. It was like things just went over the edge, and then it, I had to start giving my body the love to heal. So, you find what resonates with you. I did not stumble across a Western uh, medicine doctor that knew anything about vestibular migraines, but I think more are learning about it. So you might find one in your area um, or go to the Vestibular Association's website and see if you can find a doctor that way. I just want you to be encouraged that you can do things to support your healing even, even if you don't initially find a doctor that knows anything about what's going on with you, okay? That you can be empowered to support your health even while you're trying to get answers. Like read books, uh, listen, you know, if you can't focus on the page of books, like listen to audiobooks. I get so into listening to podcasts and books just to learn about my body and also just listening to other people's inspiring stories, even if they're not going through a vestibular something, everybody goes through life stuff and trauma, right? So like listening to that and listening to how these people navigated that, I just became a junkie for taking in good vibes and information that kind of helped me put the pieces together. Um, 
follow your passions, you know, follow things that light you up to what are you going to do so that you can support your health and help your body heal and then give back. Like what's the thing that you want to get through your vestibular something so you can do what, you know, is it to go run a marathon and, you know, climb a mountain and maybe it's not even something physical. Maybe it's, you know, start a business or you have a passion with making something like, I think just focusing on passions and things that light you up is healing in its own way in such a big way that you can't even bring words to it because that's what's going to give you life when you feel like you're sitting in darkness with your symptoms. Okay, so where to get started? Let's just recap this really quick. Look at how you're feeding yourself, okay? Look at the chemicals and the things, the products you're bringing into your home. Look at your lifestyle. Where can you like clean some things up? Where can you start to create good vibes in your home? Maybe it's a diffuser with essential oils, you know, going downstairs in the morning to the kitchen to make yourself a nourishing breakfast and putting on your diffuser. Like where can you start to create these routines and habits um, to bring the good vibes? And then it's focusing more on the root cause stuff. And maybe that's working with a Western medicine doctor. Maybe that's more an alternative approach, but where's the support that you can bring in from, you know, the external world to continue to help you on your journey. And those things all together can be so powerful. Um, I have lots of resources on my site as far as like books and things that have been monumental and other videos on this site that have helped me and continue to be like a light on my journey right now. Don't hesitate to reach out um, and ask questions. My books, my first book, Uncovering Bliss, and my second, Creating Bliss, I wrote them for vestibular warriors so that they would one, not feel alone, and then also that we can work through topics that come up all the time when I'm talking with people going through their own vestibular or something. So I hope that those are books that you can keep with you and refer to, you know, in your dark moments and in your light moments and just keep on feeling you along the way. Um, and yeah, I think that about covers it. Um, I'm thinking of you guys. I'm rooting for you guys and wishing you well. Okay. All right. Bye everyone.